It's week two of the NFL. All eyes are on Mike Evans. He got plenty of looks a week ago and turned in almost 160 yards. It's the Bucks and the Falcons. All that and more coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today, after a crazy opening weekend, it's on to week two, and we've got a good one here between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. CD, you look at the Falcons in this matchup. It's a relatively balanced offense. The next-gen stats kind of bear that out. What do you think they'll be looking to do in this one? I think it'll be exactly what you just talked about. They'll want to be balanced on offense, which means to them, they'll want everyone involved. See if they can get some one-on-ones in the passing game. Maybe identify some situation where they can swing the ball to the backs in space. Even find some spots where they just want to play some old-fashioned power football. As one of the most successful coaches in the league told us once, the definition of balanced offense, that means you can do what you want when you want to. Two clubs here, each looking to rebound from a week one loss as we're underway on EA Sports. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be led out by the final pick of the first round in 2018 out of Louisville. It's Lamar Jackson. And no excitement, unless, he, unless you're on the defensive team of last week, in his numbers. Because the only excitement he really generated was the one interception he threw. Yeah, no touchdown passes. Yeah, and his team wasn't real thrilled about that. And they lost the game. So... I know this week has been tough on him because he's been working hard. Fundamentals, footwork, finding the right targets, and bottom line, how do they get a win? And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. The keeper there turning into a big play of 23 yards, and it moves the sticks. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that, and here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game, and all that preparation, it goes right out the window. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. On second down, a run with Patterson. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. From midfield now, here's Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Yeah, yikes. Terrible kick headed straight for the sidelines. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. They're led onto the field by the former Cal Bear and the number one overall pick in 2016, Jared Goff. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe he leans on a few other parts of the offense and hopefully springs a receiver or two for it. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Back to throw, gone. Here's White. They set up the screen. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Goff now looks to throw. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked by Kendall Fuller. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Well, certainly not his best throw that time. And not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do. It gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away.
Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. After the interception, here's Jackson. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. Jackson now on second and 10. Aaron it out, looking for Ridley. And this is caught for a fucking touchdown. Calvin Ridley, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Falcons take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. You know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had to quote it back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. But well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. That's almost like one of your turkey ball games, isn't it? You just go along, man. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Taking it about the one. And he's going to get this across the 20 as he's out of bounds at the 23. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. On second and nine, Goff. This is White on the screen. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Cordero Patterson deep for Atlanta. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And it will be Falcon football. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game. But I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra injury. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them. But I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has that little extra juice. But at the same time, it's not a make or break if this were, let's say, week 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. They'll run with Patterson, and he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. The Falcons had 0-1 on the year following the loss in the opener, and they were given a gift to two straight home games to start the campaign, dropped one of them already. You have to figure a split of these two probably imperative. And they did talk about that with us prior to the game, about how important it is to start the season 1-1, one one, especially with two games at home. Because if you go 0-2, hard to make those up on the road as the season progresses. On first down, going back to Patterson. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. The last run got six, now second and four. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Got this complete to the tight end pits. And he's got this down to the 35. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 at a first down. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. As long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Jackson. 
Got a man, it's Patterson complete. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. To throw is Jackson. That's complete, Terry McLaurin with it. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle is made at the Bucks 14. That one goes for 24 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into that line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And it's caught. And the Falcons are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the run. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball to pass the play. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. From the gun, it's Jackson. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Terry McLaurin from a yard out. And the Falcons are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead. So after the disappointment in the opening week loss, Charles, this looks like really a completely different football team. They sure do, and I think they realize we can't start 0-2. And they're determined to not let it happen by the looks of things here in the early going. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's finished off by a Terry McLaurin touchdown. Fields it right around the goal line. And he's going to be out of bounds here right at the 20-yard line. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. Goff now looking to throw. And a catch right side by Evans. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. Four down, a first down carry. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. Well, Leonard Fournette, not a guy to shy away from contact. He can lower the boom on you when he gets ahead of steam, and that was a heck of a run right there. And with a guy his size, you have to know defensively that arm tackles aren't going to fly with him. You have to be able to wrap up, or else he can just brush tacklers aside like they're not even there. On first and 10, Goff. The pass is caught by Kate Otten. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. Now a first down throw, gone. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. From the 40 now on second down, Goff dumps it off to Fournette. So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing. And it brings up third and five now. And they couldn't get anything going there out of the right side of the flat of the swing backs. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but... Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Falcons grab it. Does the big boy have the juice? The 20, 10, 5. And they will finally get to him. But a great return has set him up. First and goal at the 5. And what about to the days just getting a fumble recovery? Everyone's into taking it the other way. 
try to create points themselves, aren't they? Well, they are, and now a terrific opportunity inside the five. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And they are in an absolutely golden spot. It's first and goal following the fumble return. The defense gets in the ball via the turnover. Now can this offense cash in? First and goal. They'll run with Dobbins. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Throw out right, taken in by Patterson. Touchdown! Cordero Patterson. Five-yard touchdown. And the Falcons take a three-touchdown lead. Boy, still in the first quarter, and look out. I mean, they are on pace for over 80 points in this game. I don't know that they'll get there, CD, but this has been impressive to watch so far. That certainly would be history in the making, wouldn't it, partner? I'm glad we're here to actually watch and see if it actually happens, although, like you, I have my doubts, but they are firmly in control of this game. Coup for the extra point. It's good, and before you know it, it's 21-0. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And now the end result in Atlanta touchdown. So how about this for a start? 21-0 here in the first as they kick this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores, and I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four score deficit. If they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Goff's throw into the hands of Hooper. So third down of the Falcons going with a dime. Six defensive backs. Now Goff. Forced out to his left. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that's going to make it fourth down. 21-0, our score after one. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football. Here's Jake Camarda now. And the kicks away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Atlanta regains possession of the football. Well, everything right now that they touch on this side of the football, it seems to turn to gold. They've scored on three straight possessions. That lead continues to grow. And, I mean, if they can get points here, Charles, might almost be an insurmountable comeback for the other side. I think you make a great case for that. So I'm going to flip it over to the other side. Could they make the big comeback? Certainly. Am I expecting it? Not at all. I think if we don't see a drastic change in how they're playing, this blowout is going to get bigger and bigger before the final gun. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Jackson from the shotgun. Now he'll escape to his right. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Big yards there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. 
Well, you don't expect too many quarterbacks to be adept at breaking away from would-be tacklers, but this is uncommonly good right here as he's able to get away. Yeah, and at the risk of sounding just a little bit trite, this is just a tackle that needs to be made. It's one thing when you've got a bruising 230-pound running back coming your way, but when it's a quarterback who's running for his life, your teammates will tell you, you've got to get him on the ground. First and ten, it's Patterson. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. On second and nine, Jackson. Looking sideline, and he's going to have his man as he was able to walk the tightrope there for the completion. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up third and two. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Are things looking much rosier for them here in week two? They work with the lead as they've got it first and ten. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. So second and four from the 22. Straight ahead, Patterson. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. Here's Jackson. Escaping the pressure right. The quick feet by Jackson. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Well, we've seen Jackson already have success in the first half running the football, and he gets good yardage on the ground again there. I mean, how? I know it's a $64,000 question, <laughs> CD, but how do they contain him better? You have to win against the blockers ahead of you. If those guys even occupy a defender for even a half a second, then Lamar Jackson is gone. You've got to take those blockers and move them so that you have clear vision of Lamar Jackson, and hopefully you can hem him in. And this is caught for a fucking touchdown. Tyler Lockett from 10 yards out. And the Falcons continue to pull away here in this first half. But it's not too often that you say, hey, this one's going to be over by halftime. And CD, I know our bosses probably don't want us to say that because they don't want people clicking away. But this one might be over by halftime. And since you've already put your job on the line by actually saying it, I will co-sign and go with you because you're my partner. We don't mean to do it, but this game has been exactly as you've described. I see no hope for them going forward. Two able to connect on the extra point. And a round is on here in this first half. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Taylor decides not to try to return it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now? I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on yeah, the field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots, but what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Here's gone. He completes it to Evans, and they're able to get this one across the 35. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Out of the gun, Goff. He completes it right side to light. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. To throw is Goff. 
Quick throw, knocked away, and incomplete. The offense on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and four. They'll let this go for the end zone. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Jake Camarda sent on now to punt this away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down jubilation, aren't you? And yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. From the gun, Jackson. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for naught. From the gun on third down, Jackson. It's caught, lock it. And he's brought down short by a yard. It's a third down gain of four. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Back now comes Tampa Bay. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. To throw again on second down. Goff, a quick pass here to Godwin. He's going to be dropped following a pick on the seven, past the 30 to the 32. Goff on third down. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively, or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to pump this one away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So here are the Falcons to take over on offense. They were losers to the Packers a week ago, but they've got the lead right now here as they come up on a first and 10. Jackson. Throw to the right here, taken in by McClure. Get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They'll go option to the short side. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. 
A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way to take. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. Well, Lamar Jackson, for all the talents of escaping pressure that he possesses, he was helpless to do much of anything there. He had no chance. And this came from the edge, and those pass rushers, they have so many tricks of the trade to get around blockers. They have a lot of tools in their kit. This was pure speed and athleticism on this play, though, and they could barely get a glove on him before he got the quarterback on the ground. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. 63 yards receiving for him now. That last catch good enough for a first down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando of this first half of action. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. That's Akeem Hicks, the towering NFL vet, coming in for the sack. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Another try after the first down sack. Jackson got a man. It's Patterson complete. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Another completion right back to Patterson. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. So we are at halftime here in Atlanta with the Falcons out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll get started over at the Caesar Superdome in New Orleans. And it's the Saints who are out in front. Trey Lance with a couple of touchdown passes. From there, we head north to Minnesota. Check on the Vikings at home at U.S. Bank Stadium. And that one all even as they play the visiting Carolina Panthers. Moving on, let's take a look at the next-gen stats in the first half for Tampa Bay. And they will need to get this passing game in gear because they did not do much of anything in that first half. And it's why the scoreline is what it is. Meanwhile, for the Falcons, they were much more successful throwing the football than their counterparts, as you can see the numbers there. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future and mentally. I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. On first down, it's gone. But it's caught over the middle, Hooper. They'll come up now on second and a yard. Second and a yard. 
to throw is gone. He'll get that out to the flat to White. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Goff throwing again. It's caught at the 10. And they move this all the way down to the 9. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Here's White. And the stop will come inside the 5 at the 4. Second and goal from inside the 5. Fournette is not going to get a whole lot. Maybe a yard down to the 3. Third and goal, trying to make that scoreboard at least a little more respectable. Golf. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. The three-yard touchdown pass. And the Buccaneers are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. Prater for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead back down to 21. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's Chris Godwin who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football. You're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge onto the field, fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to crush any hope left on the opposing sideline, and they want to do it with some gusto, too. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 49 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. The running game continues to be a big part of their success here early in the fourth quarter. And with those types of runs, that tells you they feel very confident in their running game. They feel very strong at this stage of the contest. And they want to keep doing exactly what we saw there, running the ball down their throat. Once more, they turn to Patterson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Patterson, he'll try it up the middle. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. It'll go as a gain of seven on the play, and it sets up a third and in inches situation. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. Oftentimes we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him, let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. They'll give it to Patterson. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. They'll go option to the short side. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that plus three. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. 
And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Lamar Jackson, 25 yards to the house. And the Falcons help the lead to four scores now here in this fourth quarter. So, Charles, the bad taste from that opening week loss, that's just a memory now. This has been a very strong performance as they score once again. Yeah, I know it's only week two, but you're exactly right because this team felt they let one get away in the opener. And not only were they determined to not let the same thing happen here, they knew that they had to correct a bunch of things. So everything that went wrong in game one, they took care of business with it in game two. Coup now for the point after. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the dog goes and never look back. You know, partner, after a while, we always say the same thing, don't we? They set the tone early, right? They started fast. So I asked a few of my horse racing friends, do you have a term for me that we can use to cover that? And they said, yeah. When a horse breaks out like that, you say he caught a flyer out of the gate. And that's exactly what this team did today. I mean, they jumped out there, jumped on them, and were never headed. So for Atlanta, they at least get the win here to earn a split of their first two home games. And they'll get to stay home again next week as the Minnesota Vikings come to town. Meanwhile, for the Buccaneers, they'll drop to 0-2. And they'll look to get back in the winning column next week as they head to Philly to face off with the Eagles.